Hi. Hello. How are, How are you? you doing, Kelly? <laughs> I'm doing great. And you, oh. my sweet friend? I'm doing good. I had to rush home. So sorry, I was a little late jumping on, but I'm excited to be <laughs> here with you. Yes, no worry. Thank you so much. Of course, I'm excited. Yes, yes. So I have a couple of friends. People are coming. So, ah, oh, fun. <laughs> so, my friend, thank you so much for accepting this invitation. Of course, uh, it's a, a blessing to have you here. Um, for me and seeing our your journey since your studies of Master of Divinity, and then now you are a kids pastor of our uh, great, great city church. Yeah. And then seeing this journey, I thought, oh, Maddie will be a good, good person to talk no. about, to serve. To talk no. about, yeah, the, know the uh, identity, who, who I am, and how can I serve with that. So... Mm. Really cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. I love that you do this. And um, just all of the speakers so far has been so inspiring. So it's so fun to be on it. <laughs> yes, yes. Cool. <laughs> so my friend, I, I want to uh, start this conversation. And it's very informal. Don't think it's like, oh my gosh, it's alive. It's very <laughs> informal. Uh, but I want to talk, uh, start this conversation, it, explaining to you why I'm doing that. So I don't know if you, if you remember, I don't think so. You were not working at the discipleship um, uh, ministry, but Holy Joe, Pastor Holy Joe, in <laughs> May 2019, she challenged me to do um, training, a self-development training. So teaching, coaching at the church. And then I was like, oh my gosh, how can I do that? How can I put together coaching with uh, the church? Like, how can I do that? Right. And then I start to pray. I start to ask God, what do you want me to speak with these people? What do you want me to teach? Because some churches, they don't like too much the, the coaching things. Right. And then... God spoke to me so clearly. It was like identity and purpose of life. Mm, and yeah. then I was like, okay, so now you have to give me the world. And then the word, and then uh, he spoke to me, I read gave to you. It's your book. Mm. And then I have a book called Rescue of Identity. Mm. And then it's my story after the divorce. And how God restored my identity. Mm -hmm. So it was very cool uh, that God gave me the roadmap and everything. And then I launched the city group yeah. uh, called Self-Development. So Identity and Purpose. And it was awesome. Seven <laughs> girls. And, and it was really cool to see the transformation. Ten weeks was really cool. Awesome. And then, yeah, this project was like uh, sleeping. And then this year, after the pandemic, after everything, God started to speak with me again. Uh, this project is not only for the church, but for everybody. And you need to teach to American people as well. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> my English. And then I validated first in Brazil. And then I gave the mentoring in Brazil, mentoring identity, and it was seven women, seven um, per people participate on that. And it was awesome to see the transformation in six weeks because the mentoring is six weeks. And then it was awesome. So I was uh, praying and then my husband said, Kelly, why don't you do with the 11 areas that you will study in your coaching? Because mm -hmm. always the first session we work the 11 areas because we believe that we are systematic. So Maddie is not only a woman, is not only a wife, is not only a, a pastor, but Maddie is everything in mm -hmm. one person. Yes. So then um, I decided to do that and it started with the, the live series in the 
in the 11 areas and inviting 11 guests to be here with us and, and talking their experiences about uh, these certain areas. So, like I told you, I saw you as an, this example of serve, of serve others, of everything that I saw in your life in the last, I don't know, one, two years, almost two years that we know each other. So yes. I was like, Maddie School. So I'd like <laughs> to ask you first again, thank you, and ask you to introduce yourself and tell me a little bit your experience about identity and to serve. Yes, well, um, as you probably know already, my name is Maddie, and I am actually from Claremont, Florida, which is near Orlando. Um, but two years ago, almost exactly two years ago, um, I got married to my husband, Chase, and we moved here to Lakeland. Um, Chase had a job opportunity here, and I had wanted to go to Southeastern already to get my master's degree, and so it just so happened to work out. This is where God planted us for Chase, and, and then for me as well, so um, I started pursuing my master's in ministerial leadership, and um, around that time that I got married and we moved here, I really felt a call to do full-time ministry, um, and I didn't really know what that looked like just because, it, you know, like growing up, I, I was involved in church and I went to church, but I just didn't really have much experience with what people do in full-time ministry or like what that could look like. And so I really wasn't sure. And, but I just knew that God was calling me to it. And so I just was like, okay, like, I'm just going to trust you, God. And um, I knew that he had planted us here in Lakeland for a reason. And so um, when we just, when we just moved, I actually wasn't starting school for about six to seven months at the time. And so um, Chase and I were here, and we were um, introduced to Grace City, our church. And sorry, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> she, wants, she wants to be in the conversation. Um, but no, when we first moved here, I was like, "All right, Chase." Like, and and we had never really served the church together, served it separately. Honestly, we had never served the church um, in that capacity that we get to do now. Um, but I just really felt, I was like, okay, if I'm going to be called into full-time ministry, I should probably start serving the church in some capacity. And so um, my husband, Chase, and I, we went um, to our membership class that we have at Grace City, and we hopped on the Connections team. So that was our first um, little role at the church as we served on Connections and the discipleship team. Um, and just something special happened when we started serving God's house together. That was very special. Um, but just dedicating our lives to his house and to his people, um, not only transformed our marriage, but transformed our lives individually. Um, and it was really cool to see what God did when we really submitted our lives to him and decided, Hey, we're going to serve your house, God. Um, and so around that time we started serving, I served all summer. I did an internship over that summer as well. I just wanted to spend as much time in the church as I could. I wanted to absorb everything. I wanted to learn everything. I wanted to be in the same room as some incredible leaders that, that lead our church. So I really did that over the summer before starting school. And then by the time I started school, I was like, okay, like, I love serving the church. <laughs> like I love serving people. Um, it fills, it fills me. And I know our, our pastor always says, you know, those who refresh others are refreshed to themselves. And I really felt that personally, as I was just dedicating my life to serving the local church. Um, I think there is this, this myth out there that when you serve, 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 you can be burnt out. And that can happen if you're not careful. Yeah. You're not doing it out of a place um, of God's heart and God's presence and God's strength. Um, but when you're serving out of that place of just um, being in the presence of God, you yourselves are refreshed and you yourselves are rejuvenated and given life. And so I just really felt that. And so at that time, I knew that I wanted to be in full-time ministry and potentially be on staff one day, but that just seemed very like a crazy idea because I had just moved to Lakeland, and I'm like, I would never get on staff there. Like, that was crazy, um, but God just told me to pray about it, and so at that point, I started praying about it every single day. Um, every day, I would pray for the timing. I would pray for the people. I would pray for the position, um, and two weeks after that, um, I felt like God was like, okay, Maddie, like, great job, like good job praying. But um, 
but I want you to be more bold with your faith. Like I know the desire of your heart. So I want you to say it out loud to me and have faith and not fear. And so that Monday I was in my quiet time reading in Genesis where God tells Sarah this time next year, you're going to have a baby. Wow. And she like, laughs and God's like, why are you laughing? Like nothing is too hard for me. And so I wrote in my journal. I said, this time next year, I will be a pastor at Grace City. <laughs> nothing is too hard for God. <laughs> and um, funny because that was on a Monday in November of 2019 and on that Friday Holly Jo had me over and asked me to be on staff with her as a reporter which was amazing I was like oh my gosh Jesus like you did that in five days <laughs> um but the coolest part is you know I thought I thought that was the miracle and I was blown away and I was so grateful and I remember telling somebody about that journal entry and how I wrote like pastor at Grace City and they were like wow Maddie because at the time I was just a coordinator, you know, if you want to see titles, but they're like, wow, Maddie Pastor, like really shooting for the stars. And I got so insecure. And, you know, at that point, I really felt like my, my identity was in the title of like, oh, well, I, I, you know, prayed that I would be a pastor in a year and I'm only a coordinator and I'm so insecure. And I noticed that I began to work and do my job out of a place of insecurity. And I think that's what's so interesting is, when I think about serving and I think about identity in the church, I found my identity and I found confidence and security in God through serving. Uh, but like I said before, if we're not serving out of a place of God's heart, it can be very easy to get caught up in the titles or the details and the ifs, ands of that. And what's my exact purpose? Like, what is my gifting? Like, am I doing that? Um, and at that time, I just felt like God taught me like, Maddie, you're right where you're supposed to be. And your purpose is just to serve me. Simply, your purpose is to serve me. And so I just put my head down, like, okay, God, I'm just going to serve you. Like, I don't even care what title it is. I just want to serve you. And, you know, that's a challenge. And not only, not only because of the title, but just I just put a lot of pressure on myself. I just think that I was just nervous if I was doing a good job. And I honestly was just insecure about my work and what I was doing. And um, th those like seven months that I was in that position really, really taught me a lot about security and that my security is in Jesus, that my purpose yeah. is only to serve people. that My purpose is only to love Jesus. And I think we just get caught up in the details sometimes, but Fast forward seven months and randomly just got a call um, from our lead pastor to step into the kids pastor position, um, which I was just not expecting. I was like, are you sure? <laughs> um, and it was just, it was just God. But, you know, and now looking back, it was not even a year later that I had a pastoral role at that church. And that is just, that's not to boast about me, but that's just to say that's how good and how big our God is and honestly when that happened I think I was just more humbled than ever that my job is just to love and serve on people it doesn't matter what position I'm in what title you know what I'm doing you know I think they always say at the church like if you if you can't you know be humble enough to serve and want to clean the bathrooms then you can't you're not ready for a role um that might be a little bit higher up and I really felt that play you know, I really felt that lesson um, be taught to myself. I was just so humble just to be in a role like that. And um, it just reminded me, like, God is simple. We just have to love him and love people. And when we do that out of a place of just um, being in his presence and relying on his strength, um, our identity will be firm. Our, our confidence be um, found and so I, I even find like sometimes when I'm insecure about things or I don't have confidence I'm like am I serving out of a place of lack or am I serving out of a place of abundance in in the spirit of God and so that's just kind of a question I always ask myself but every time that I'm serving in the abundance in the spirit of God I experience confidence and security and purpose regardless of the of it so that's a little bit about my past two years so now I'm here in Lakeland serving as a kids pastor um, it's been a blast like it's very cool to see that when you're operating in your grace zone like it just it just yeah. works and you just you really do feel confident and I think that's a whole nother factor is um, maybe you're serving right now maybe you're serving the church right now 
and you still feel like insecure and not confident, um, be patient because God, God is working things out as we speak. Um, and you will find your play, yourself in a place where your giftings are being used um, right where, where they're supposed to be. You'll, be. you'll find yourself in a place, and God will put you in a place where you're in your zone um, and you'll just feel secure. You'll feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. And it's a really, really cool experience. Yes. Um, operate out of that place so yes wow really cool really cool to know the whole picture (laughs) it's crazy i'm just like it's honestly wild for me to think two years ago i didn't know anybody in lakeland and now i was even just thinking the other day literally yesterday i was like i like these people one feel like my family you know this church feels like family but two i'm just like thank God, like literally the grace of God that I get to live this life and that I get to give my life to the church, to the, not even to our church, Grace City, but to the church. Exactly. Uh, that's what I want to give my life to every single day. And I'm just so grateful um, that God has just led me to a place where I just am giving my life. I'm just serving. And through that, he is just Amen. loving and pouring into me more than ever so it's a really cool thing yes yes i want to highlight two two things that you said one one thing was when you start to pray to serve was in your quiet time with god Mm -hmm. so i believe that your identity you found your identity first in the quiet time with god so you understood your identity as a daughter of god And then you start to seek God and seek God and seek God. And then he put in in your heart the desires of his heart. Yeah. Because uh, like like I like to say, God's business is people. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 The thing that he loved more than anything is people. Is yeah. his, his uh, uh, kids. Mm-hmm. So... First thing was you in the secret place in your quiet time with God, seeking God and seeking his presence and seeking mm. uh, the desires of his heart. And then you start to feel the desire to serve. Yes. Yeah. When, and this is really cool. Uh, like I, I, I start to, to say about this live series is when you know who you are, you know what your purpose Totally. So everything started with our identity. So as a daughter of God, seeking God in that quiet place, you found your purpose to serve others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, too, something I, I've even been learning now is, you know, this last week, I just asked myself the question, I'm like, is God really enough for me? You know, like, is God really all that I need? And, you know, sometimes my answer is, if I'm honest with myself, sometimes I put things above God. You know, we all do. Uh, It's our human flesh. And so I think sometimes we can put the worry and the anxiety of our identity and wanting to find our identity before God and our purpose before God. So I think this past week, even God has just like brought me back to Um, just that ground level of like, listen, Maddie, like I am all you need. I'm all you need. And then everything else flows from that. And so like you said, like just being with him and only him, my focus on him in his presence, seeking him. um, That's where everything else flows from. And it's funny that you say that because honestly, when I moved here to Lakeland and I felt like, okay, I want to be in full-time ministry. I never envisioned that that would be the local church. Um, I always wanted to do ministry, like ministry missions, like type stuff, um, organizational, like nonprofit organizations. Um, I never really envisioned that I would be at the, like working at a local church um, Mm -hmm. environment. And so that desire you know, even when I got it, it felt like such a dream come true. And it was so crazy to me that that was a short, like that dream hadn't been my dream forever, but that dream had 
just been birthed out of time spent with him recently. Amen. And so even just, you know, if you're listening to this and you're like, but I don't even have a dream. Like I don't even have a desire. I don't even know like where to start. It's just that simple truth of what you said, Kelly, is just, it comes from seeking him. Um, and when you're in his presence and seeking him, um, he gives you desires and dreams. Um, and two, it's like when he puts those desires and dreams in your heart, it's not for nothing. And he's a faithful God and he will see it through to the end. Um, and that's just so cool about his character. So if he puts it in your heart, like he is wanting you to, to see it through. Um, and he's going to make it happen as long as you're walking through it with him. So that's super cool. Yes, yes, really cool. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I want to highlight here on your testimony, what you said uh, most many people uh, go serve it too much and then goes to a process of burnout. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, when we are doing coaching, uh, we see many people with burnout, and then we start to treat the burnout like, mm. and the burnout is the stress. And I I can see that mo many pastors. Um, find their purpose in the, sec the secret place mm -hmm. uh, to serve others. In yeah. one moment of their ministry, they stop it to, they, they, they confuse, they mix the identity with the, the ministry. So mm -hmm. they stop it to be the son of God and it started to be the pastor. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yes. And then when this starts to happen here, is because they forgot their identity and they, and this is many professions. Like for example, many people say, oh, hello, how are you? Who are you? I am an architect, for example, for me. My profession is architect, I'm architect. No, I'm not architect, I'm Kelly, I'm mom of Josue, I'm, you know, I'm a daughter of God. And mm -hmm. then I have been this, I, I, I'm doing this right now. So I can see with my, my experience in my profession, I can see this when change, the identity mixed with the, the uh, profession and mm -hmm. it starts to, to think their identity is the profession. And, and then yeah. I, I can see, I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, I definitely do. And you know, sometimes I fight, like I fight that tension almost every day, especially I, I, you know, this is more specific to my job, but I do notice that tension the most when like big events are coming up or I'm planning something or, you know, just like something big is happening and it's like, Ooh, like the big, you know, your kids pastors is your big event. Like blah, blah, blah. I fight that tension. And, um, I think a lot of times I have to stop myself and I, I like, I know I do this a lot. I stop myself. I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, Am I operating from my strength right now, or am I operating from the the strength of Jesus right now? Am I doing this for my glory right now, or am I doing this for the glory of Jesus? Yes. And so I think a lot of times, like we just have to be cautious enough and cognizant enough in our everyday life and in our job to to have those moments where we stop ourselves in our spirit and we say. Like, is this, am I doing this for me? Am I doing this for God? Am I operating on my strength? Am I operating on God's strength? Am I getting my ideas from God? Or am I getting these ideas myself? Because I want my ideas to be God ideas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think when we get to a place where we operate from our ideas and from our strength and um, for our glory, um, we get tired. Um, we get exhausted, we get frustrated. We're not fulfilled. We're not satisfied. We're insecure. We our identity um we have no confidence in what we do um and that's really i feel like when burnout happens and two i you know i've heard this a lot too you know by andrew and whatnot but um he always says there's a difference between being tired and and, and burnt out you know there's a difference in being a good there's a good tired is basically what he says yeah. you know home on a sunday night i'm exhausted <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I need like a little break but but there is a difference in being like a good tired of like man that was a good day like I met so many families I got to connect with some kids I got to play games with them I remembered their name I got to hear their story um five kids gave their life to Jesus 
today, um, but I'm still tired. <laughs> and then there's a difference between on the flip side, you know, if burnout does start happening and does start taking place in your life because you're operating out of a place of your own strength of like, oh, like, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, I, I was such annoying, like, blah, 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 blah. That type of attitude, those fruits of your life um, are a result of, of burnout. And so a lot of times I have to ask myself, okay, what, what is, what is the fruits of this? Am I feeling secure? Am I feeling, um, confident? Am I feeling like people are being impacted? Or am I feeling the good kind of tired where I just know kingdom work was done or are the fruits insecurity? Are the fruits frustration? Are the fruits, um, it, like being unsatisfied? Um, and if those are the fruits, I kind of can, can identify that, that I'm operating out of a place that's not from God. Yes, yes, yes. This is cool. When you start to analyze yourself mm -hmm. and and see what is happening here right now, and then you can recognize that you are not seeking God like before. So if it's, I'm serving for Him, why I'm not feeling Him anymore? Why I'm not spending time with Him anymore? Yeah, yeah sometimes, but it's, this is not only in the ministry, but a uh, regular profession as well. Sometimes I, I feel the same and I was like, God, where I felt, I, I felt down. Uh, take me right now and take me there. I want to see where, what I do. And then I want to, to start again. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this, this, uh, this year, I, I start this year with uh, 21 days of fasting, then you are fasting. I like to start the year with the Daniel fasting and then I was like, God, I'm missing you. I'm, I'm really missing you. I'm missing the Kelly, the single Kelly that was like, yeah, God all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Climbing the mountain and yeah. staying there forever, like two, <laughs> three hours with God and like right. I'm missing this Kelly. But what is amazing and that's why I'm, I'm teaching about the circle of life is because we can find the, the balance in all areas yeah so, like you said now is me and chase serving yeah always was only me serving or only him serving but now it's us and change it everything when you yes. start to serve together yes so we can find the balance in all areas and manage the professional the wife right. the mother in the future for you the mother and everything yes so when i when i start a coaching process for example and doing the circle of life when arrived to the serve i always ask i don't know if you saw the circle of life the first mm -hmm. thing is a spiritual life mm -hmm. always start speaking how's your relationship with god because we believe the emotional intelligence is when you have a good relationship with God, a good relationship with yourself, mm -hmm. and take the best of yourself, and then you go to others and can take the best of others, you know? Right. Uh, and if you think about that, this, this is a science, science concept. But if mm -hmm. you think about that, Jesus spoke about that, so love God first, and then love others like yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so mm. if you see the circle of life is exactly like that. Wow. Uh, so the first pillar, the first area is spiritual life. Uh, How is your relationship with God? Not, and then I always ask, not go to the church, mm. not serve, but your relationship, your quiet time with God. Yeah. And then you, you see is the relationship with others, parents, uh, spouse and then kids and then friends and then go to yourself and then be yourself you see a uh, health serve and mm -hmm. serve comes uh, to uh, the, the person area so when like you said when we are serving others we are receiving mm -hmm. yeah so when you are uh, even that you are sick if you are delivering heal you are being healed yes so yeah. it's really cool this yes this uh exchange like mm -hmm. when you can uh-huh this relationship and then when i arrive to this pillar uh the social area i always ask 
how are you serving others? Could be financially or could be with your time or could be... So many people do this like, mm, I'm not serving. <laughs> uh, serve to serve my, 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 my husband and my kids. Yes. And I was like, yes. Okay. But like, <laughs> what are you doing more? Because we need to grow and, and contribute with others. Yeah. So many people have these problems. So for the regular people, Maddie, what do you can uh, give as an advice how they can serve better, mm -hmm. not only their own families or their, themselves, but uh, others like uh, uh, love God, love, love themselves, and then love others. How do you think you can give an advice how love others? Yes, I think um, I think it comes from just simple things. You know, I think we really, me included, sometimes want to think like so abstract about how I can serve others and how I can really make a difference in other people's lives. And I think we've, you know, we've all probably heard this said, but a smile, a hello, um, taking the extra time to be like, how are you doing today? Like, not just like, hey, how are you? Like, pass by. Um, and I, I need to work on that myself, you know? It's just like, I think in life, um, we get in such a rush. And like, especially in this culture, it's so quick, fast paced. I got to get to my next meeting. I got to do this. And even in ministry, I find myself being like, okay, I got to go to the next meeting. Um, and something that we've been encouraged as a church is to, to linger with people and to really take our time with people, um, to stick around with people, play the long game. And so I think that's something that we can all do, um, whether it's a stranger, whether it's someone you've known for years, Years, um, just taking that extra time and being very cognizant of in the coffee shop. Hi, like, how are you doing? Like, oh my gosh, you know, I love your shirt. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Or, you know, paying for someone's coffee if you have the means. But if not, um, a simple hello and how are you checking in on you goes a long way. And I know for me, one of my 2021 goals was to, um, you know, a lot of times I'm thinking of people or someone pops in my head and I'm praying about, I'm praying for them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I wonder how Sally's doing. Like I've really been thinking about her a lot lately. Um, and so my goal this year is, okay, when I'm thinking of somebody like that, or when someone pops in my head like that, I want to text them. I want to give them a call. I really want to take that next step, um, and let them know I'm thinking about them and let them know that I, um, am hoping they're doing well. I'm praying for them. I'm praying for their situation. Um, because I, I know that when people do that to me, I'm like, you were thinking about me? Like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. my day, that makes me feel the love of God. And so um, little things like that with just reaching out and just going the extra mile for people, lingering with people, not rushing through your day, not rushing through um, your errand, you know, really just taking your time and going the extra mile with people in the most simple ways, um, have the power really impact their lives, encourage them, build them up. Um, also, it's just like you can never compliment people enough. You know, I think we can all agree we love being encouraged. Our hearts love being encouraged and built up and complimented. Um, and, you know, that, that comes from a genuine place. You know, I want to I want to always encourage people. I want to tell them that they look awesome. I want to um, that their hair is cute, you know, because I know that means a lot to me. And so just little things like that. Um, that serve people that makes them feel fulfilled that makes them feel the love of God and I think that's something that we can all do um, no matter what profession no matter what age you are no matter what stage of life um, that's something that we can all implement in our lives even myself included so yes yes really cool really cool think about the person just make a call send a message uh, yeah it's awesome and I, I, we can see the difference in the person's life when this happens. Sometimes I do that. I, like uh, yesterday, I said to my husband, uh, how many days are you not talking with your sister? And he was like, why? And I was like, because her voice in, is in my head for the last three days saying, I want to talk with my, my brother. I want to be, uh -huh. have a time with him. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> And then he called her and spoke with her. It was, was very cool. 
So right. this is a simple thing that everybody can do. If you are listening to that, so this is a simple thing. How can you serve others? And, and uh, another day I heard somebody saying, the best way for you to show love for, for someone is um, praying for the person, mm -hmm. praying mm -hmm. for this person. So imagine it. Um, so some, ah, uh, okay, Rosie uh, wrote here. If anyone forced you to go one mile, go with them two miles, Matthew 5, 41. Thank you, Rosie. Love that. Uh, and then if we, we can do just this or send a message. So, and say, look, I remember you, like I told you, oh, Maddie, I was praying and asking God for people and, and God spoke to me about you and you accepted the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> it was like simple, I was praying and I was like, God, really, Maddie, do you think so? And then I was like, okay, God, I will ask her if, it, if it's just an impression of my heart. She say no, but if it's you saying to me, okay, she will accept. And then no. simple. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and like guys, what Maddie is doing right now is serving others. Uh, mm -hmm. What we are doing here with this live series is serving you because it's free content, free value content. So it's awesome, Maddie. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And then um, the last thing I want to you to share with us. Uh, so how are you managing your 11 areas now that you are full-time pastor? And as a pastor, we know need to work on Sunday, so mm -hmm. have to take care of kids. You don't have kids, and now you are taking care of other people's kids. So how are you managing thinking about the 11 areas? How are you managing that? Um, it's been good. It's been an adjustment, obviously, being in full-time ministry. Like I said before, that was never really in a context that I was in, and you know, for the four years before this chapter of my life, I was um, at a big public college in Florida and in, in environments where people didn't know God and no one really knew Jesus. No one really talked about Jesus. And I just had, I made the decision myself that I was going to love and follow Jesus. And um, that was very difficult. And so now being in a context in an environment where you know, I'm around church people and Jesus people all the time. And, you know, the goal obviously is to bring people in and, and stuff. But from the week to week basis, you know, in the office and stuff, I'm at the church with um, our other staff. And so that's been an interesting adjustment of just like, okay, I, I'm surrounded by it. But there is something special. And I'm just so grateful um, that I did have my experience at a big public college where I had to make the decision to follow Jesus and be like, okay, like, <laughs> like no one's telling me to do this. You know, no one's asking how my relationship with Jesus really is. It's just me and, and God. Mm -hmm. There's just such a special hunger and thirst and desperation for Jesus. And so for me, that's really been something that I have not wanted to lose being in this environment. And I think, you know, it can be easy to just get in the habit of just God is here, you know, we're, we're in church, we're around church people. And so um, right when I got my job, I, I fasted and I was like, like God, like, thank you for this job. Honestly, it's a dream come true, but I just want to fast and I want to pray and I want to seek you because I just don't want to lose my hunger and my desperation and my thirst for you. I'm so grateful that um, a friend actually encouraged me to do that. And I'm so grateful that they did because I think that really just set the foundation of my job being about Jesus and my relationship with Jesus and not my job just being, you know, just like, okay, this is what I do, you know? And so, um, it's funny how you were talking earlier about all of the areas and I love that this one is up top of your spiritual, like how you're doing with Jesus, because I think everything else flows from that. Um, and so the way that I do my job flows from my relationship with Jesus Amen. and my thirst and hunger for Jesus, the way that I love people, the way that I treat my husband, um, the way that I treat my dog, <laughs> flows. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but no. <laughs> um, close my relationship with Jesus. And so um, it's it's been good. I, I'm really grateful that I started it out just with that mindset. I think that helped a lot. But also I want to encourage, you know, you guys out there it is a constant choice and it is a constant tension and struggle. You know, it's not that 
I figured it out one day, just figured out for the rest of my life. I think what you said earlier about managing all, um, it's always a little teeter board, you know, it's always yeah. changing. It's always adjusting. Seasons are changing. People in your life go in and out. And so there's always change. There's always adjustments. Um, there's always times where I fail and I fall short and I don't put Jesus first. Um, and I just think at the end of the day, I just have to go before the Lord and say, God, like search me and know me. Um, forgive me for the areas of my life that haven't glorified you today. Um, and I just always, always, always have to come back to Jesus. It always comes back to Jesus. And so um, I, I, it's been good, but I just, it, it's a constant struggle, not a struggle, but it's a constant tension and a constant choice to yeah. follow Jesus and to put him first and to seek him and to thirst for him and to hunger for him. And so I've, you know, really tried to make it a goal and priority um, to do that first and foremost and everything um, flows from that. And, and when that is right, everything else is right. You know what I mean? And when that is off, other things are off. And so um, I think, again, just identifying areas of my life. Maybe I'm being frustrated at my husband one day. Oh, gosh, maybe my relationship with I need time with Jesus, honestly. <laughs> or like, I, I'm not serving people really good today. I'm just in a rush. All I'm thinking about myself. Um, let me go back to the top and think about my relationship with Jesus. And so um, I love this model. I, I love thinking about it that way. Um, it's really helped me even bring clarity to my life. So um, I'm going to use it going forward. But yeah. uh, in ministry just this past season, it's been good. It's been awesome just to still have that intimacy with God and just to see everything else flow from that. Yes, yes. Wow, really cool, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we believe in, in, in the, the coaching session. I always say to my clients, uh, John 10, 10. Uh, so Jesus came and came to, to give you life, yeah. an abundant life. Yes. So if you are not living the abundant life, is a dysfunction so mm. we discover the dysfunction when we do this too when yeah. we, we start to ask the 11 areas and then the person see oh oh my gosh it's not a circle it's a star or yeah. a, like you know right it's not, it's not a circle and then i i teach that to them you can leave the balance you can leave don't always of course it's not always will be everything 10 right uh, but can be eight, can be like eight, nine, but closer to a circle. Mm -hmm. But And then this is the abundant life. This mm -hmm. is when you find the balance of everything and you are uh, managing your time, your schedule to give attention to everybody in your life, including yourself. That's why you start with, with, with the spiritual area mm -hmm. and finish with emotional area. Right. Relationship with yourself. I love that. And then, yeah, and it's really cool that we can we can leave that. We can give time for, and then everything starts with the relationship with God, and every starts everything ends with the relationship with yourself. So take care to love yourself, and then you are able to love others. Yes. So yeah, really cool. I like to say the L. I don't know if you heard yeah. about it before, but like. This God spoke to me about the L in 2017, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, God is that!" So, relationship with God when when you are having the relationship with God, and then you can see Him, mm -hmm. and then you go to you and okay, God, now you can heal me, now you can transform me, now you can uh, do whatever you want to do, and then we are able to love others, and then when we love mm -hmm. others, we find the darkness in others and we don't like too much and then when we, when we like the verse i read today the the, the the sharp the brother sharp other sharp uh, other brother yeah you know like and go there and sharp and then okay go back to you look yourself analyze okay guys i have this problem i have this problem with my brother i have this problem with this person mm -hmm. uh what is having me here and then God shows you and then to you go to yourself and then you are able to love others again. Mm. And it's a cycle. Right. Until Jesus come back. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Starting with, <laughs> with the relationship with God and ends with the relationship with ourselves. Yeah. And then we are able to love and serve others. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Awesome. 
Thank you so much, Matt. It was precious, our conversation. I turn off the, the comments because uh, the Instagram we start to start to put again on the people's face. So uh, Andy, Andy was here. Yeah. Um, so I will turn off for us to, and then I can speak with them at the end. But thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Yes, it was awesome thank you. Our conversation. Yeah. Congratulations Good. for your position, for your job. And I want to bless you to be a blessing to these kids and to serve Thank this church that we love so much. And I'm missing this church. I will go there to Echo Conference. <laughs> yes, Echo, that will be awesome. We can't wait to have you. Yeah. I will save this live if you want to later send to others you can send so I I will save on my IGCV okay okay sounds good bye Kelly thank you bye bye See so. you. hello everyone I will open right now the the comments so if you like to comment or ask something is open now I'm sorry I turned off because it was in front of her so I don't know what's happening with Instagram. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you for your compliment with the, the verse. Um, hi, Andrea. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. We talked about serve area today with Maddie Park. She's a pet, kids pastor uh, at Great City Church. So was really cool uh, to know her story, her testimony was really awesome. And tomorrow, uh, unfortunately, our guest canceled uh, the guest to speak about professional life. And I was cleaning the house today and the guys spoke to me, uh, they will cancel because you need to talk about that area because it's your experience in that area. So I was like, okay, God. So today was like in the morning, God spoke to me that. And then uh, one hour ago, Kent just told me, oh, no, he sent a message. Oh, John canceled. John, John's not going to do that. So guys, you have the pleasure to receive me. Uh, we will have an event tomorrow night so i will do the live at noon so it will be awesome for you to be here with me on your lunch time and and learn a little bit how god called me my call is with my profession so he called me to be professional in mission when i had when i was 18 years old it was the first time god spoke to me to be professional emission. So I will talk about everything tomorrow. Will be cool. Invite your friends to be here with us. Uh, we'll be at noon here and two o'clock, uh, uh, duas horas da tarde in Brazil. So it will be very cool to have you. And Mr. Kent Fisher is not here today because he went to a training, to a meeting of a uh, primary meeting and but we will be here tomorrow and he's excited to you know interview me <laughs> so uh but i'd like to invite you to go to our store royal fisher store is bit dot l y forward or the slash shop royal fisher and then you can see there our products uh everything was inspired in this subject identity when God spoke with us in July that you are not creating a brand, you are not creating a, a company, you are creating a new identity of king and queens of God, of God's kingdom. So we are bringing this identity of uh, king and queens of the kingdoms, God's kingdom. That's the purpose of our store. It's not only to sell products, but it's creating this identity. And you are part of that. You are part of that. 
you that is participating in this live series, I want to ask you save to watch. I will I will upload right now. So save to watch later. Share with others if you saw value on that. Share with others, and I want you to put your comment here. What are you What are you thinking about that? What you How are you serving others with your life or finances? So it will be very cool to know more about you. Okay? So don't forget, like, save to watch later, send to others, and visit our store. will be... Oh, and the store, we have the discount for you that is watching these lives. The coupon with 10% discount uh, calls identity with the capital Y. So coupon, coupon you can go to the store uh, and then the discount place, you put identity with the capital Y. Okay? Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. See you tomorrow with Professional Life. is our last live. And after that, um, you can go right now to my bio, actually, and fill the form to participate to the master class. We will start the master class in on Monday, so it will be three days of master class to a closed group. So it will not be open, will not be on Instagram or Facebook. It will be a Zoom meeting with you to work your identity, to work your life. I want to be with you. So go to my bio, fill the form for you to be able to receive in the first place um, the invitation for the, our master class, okay? About identity to work your life. We'll be free this master class and I will, I will be with you three days working your, your circle of life, your goals, and how to, uh, to give you potential to fulfill your purpose, okay? See you there. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. God bless you all.